It gives me great pleasure today to introduce a very good friend of mine, Mr. Louis Smith. Uh, I've known Louis for about 25 years now. And what I've learned over the last 25 years from Louis is that there is something wrong with what we're doing with our food. And um, I think Louis is going to do a fantastic job today of explaining a few things and bringing some light to the subject. Louis is a certified nutrition consultant. He's a holistic nutritional practice practitioner. He's a sports nutritionist and everything that goes along with that. So folks, I'm gonna hand over to Louis now and let him educate us. Thank you, Louis. All right, hey, it is so wonderful to see all of you folks from around the world on this call across here. We got people from Idaho, we got people from Washington, we got people from Florida, we got people from California, we got people from South Africa, we got people from the UK, we got people from Tanzania, just absolutely for people from New York. I know I've left off a bunch of you. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have started mentioning areas, but it's just wonderful, wonderful to have you all at the call here. I'm so pumped up about our future, the difference we're making in this world. And this call is really to empower people to. Uh, take ownership of their buying habits and their cooking habits and eating correctly. And so we're going to be talking about a variety of foods and uh, how to purchase them. So how did I get on this journey? Because I was one of those people that I would eat meat three times a day. And if I wanted a uh, salad, I ate chicken. And I remember, you know, when my wife used to make salads for me, I would say to her, I said, sweetheart, do I look like a rabbit? And, and then I got leukemia. And I discovered uh, that, you know, we are what we eat. And then uh, the more I researched this, uh, I discovered that even what we think is good is not so good. And I think you're going to be blown away, but yeah, because this is now about 32 years of discovering and research that we're trying to put into a little slideshow across here. But by changing my lifestyle, by eating only organic, cook from scratch, nothing in a box, nothing in a packet, nothing in a can, nothing frozen, but stopping to use poison shampoo and poisonous conditioner and poison skin cream and poison shaving gel and poisonous aftershave and poisonous deodorant, by taking all those things out of my life, by detour, we'll make a future video about uh, empowering you to make quality choices about cleansing and detoxing your home, and then by changing my supplements, I was horrified to discover that my supplements I was taking could actually enhance cancer. Studies done uh, on the 21 biggest manufacturers of supplements sold across the world because they used ingredients like turpentine and petroleum, rocks and metal filings. And so uh, th this to me is so exciting because this is the first step in going in the right direction, knowing when you're put, putting food into your basket, is it good for you or bad for you? And so uh, let's enjoy this journey together. We're gonna have some fun across here. All right, there we are. Okay, so the first thing is, uh, if you wanna be healthy, what you're seeing in front of you is really the foundation of health. Uh, it's a food that God created our bodies to function on. For it's full of antioxidants and full of nutrients and, uh, you know, full of bioflavonoids and vitamins. And that's where our energy comes from, our electrolytes and everything like that. So the first thing to understand is when you pick up these foods, are they good for you or bad for you? Well, according to the EWG, Environmental Work Group, for many, many years now, strawberries is the most pesticide-ridden food in the world. So when you're buying a food like strawberries, you want to make sure that it is a certified organic, that's an organic strawberry, and then you still want to take it home and wash it. Uh, spinach is the second most, and uh, kale is the third most. Now, when you look at that, it's absolutely ridiculous when you, when you think about this, because I remember moving to the States of about 11 and a half, 12 years ago, and I remember saying, I would go to a restaurant and I'd choose out a strawberry kale salad because I wanted to try and get the healthiest food I can full of antioxidants because that's what I thought it was. And when I saw this list put up by the EWG, I nearly flipped my lid. And so when you're buying these foods, you want to see these seals on, these kind of seals, because if they've got these seals on, you know you can really trust the label of that product. Now, it even gets a bit more advanced than that. 
When you're buying these foods, you want to make sure it's got a PLU number of nine. Remember, nine is fine. So what you're looking for, we'll show you this uh, later on, little plant location unit number. And if it's got a nine on as the first letter after the word PLU number, then the nine, after the first letter uh, uh, is nine, then, then you'll see there that nine means three things. Number one is you can remove the pesticide. They have sprayed it on and they've glued it on with a chemical, uh, normally called silicon. Sometimes they use shellac on tomatoes and apples. The next thing is the nine means is that not only can you remove the pesticide, but they grew it with non-GMO seed. And thirdly, is that it was grown with uh, compost and manures. That means uh, the product is uh, has got about 300% more nutrition in it than if it was not grown with a nine. Very important. Okay, a little bit about an apple. When you're looking for an apple, what you're looking for in an apple? Well, if you look at this apple over here, if you see the end of it is very rippled. Now, this to me was very important to understand because I, I saw studies where they found organic apples that were 11 months old. So when you're looking for an apple, the more raffled the end is, the younger it is off the tree. The more smoother the end is, the longer it's been off the tree. The shallower this area, the fresher the apple, and the more shapely, you see this apple is not round, the more shapely an apple, uh, the, the, the younger that apple. And apples are incredible for bones and asthma and dementia and diabetes and cholesterol and weight and cancer. Now, if you're looking at the pictures, you have a red apple sweet, what does sweet mean? Full of sugar. What does green mean uh, or tangy mean? Tangy means it's antioxidants, full of nutrition, full of vitamin C, low in sugar. That's why kiwi fruit, nice and tangy, full of antioxidants, um, where you eat a grape full of sugar. So uh, you, you can tell on a fruit, it's not a, a uh, oh, this is surprising. No, if it's sweet, it's got sugar in. If it's tangy, it doesn't have much sugar in. Carrots. Carrots, there's so much to learn about carrots. First of all, when God made food, he often made it to look like the part of the body it heals. When we grew up, our parents just always say, eat your carrots, they're good for the eyes. Well, first of all, our parents didn't know that uh, carrots is not a human food. It takes over 30 hours to digest. That's why it's a horse food, because they, uh, uh, horses take longer than 30 hours for the for their from mouth to to bowel movement, and so carrots take about thirty hours. So you'd have to eat it a second time to get the nutrient out of it. That's why even if you're a full-on diabetic, you can eat a raw carrot because they they're nearly indigestible. Now they're packed with nutrition, they're packed with antioxidants. They really are good for you. But the biggest problem with carrots, they turn into sugar. So the minute you cook them, they are the sugar stick, and so now when you break the fibers down then uh, you're getting you're releasing all the sugar. So be careful if you're diabetic, you can eat raw ones, they're great fiber, they're great roughage. If you want the nutrient out of it, the best way to do it is to juice it. Now, how I do my vegetable juice, about all these vegetables, we're actually gonna make about four gallons today of vegetable juice. Then we freeze them in ice trays. Then we put them in zipper bags. And every morning we put some vegetable juice into our glass of, of water, whatever. And it is just tastes absolutely incredible. Why I do it like that? Because that means as the ice breaks out, as it melts, you're releasing small amounts. You're not gonna get sugar spiking. And then the vegetable juice, I just pump it full of ginger and turmeric and lemon and uh, celery and kale and uh, and cabbage and, and broccoli and uh, all the things that are low in sugar. Now, the next thing I want to show, uh, so carrots are great for vision, heart, cancer prevention, digestion. They're just wonderful, packed with nutrition. But remember, moderation, anything that grows below the ground. Now, this, and if it's cooked or if it's juiced. Now, this is very important to understand. People go and eat baby carrots. Well, a baby carrot is a fully grown carrot shaped to look like a baby carrot. Now, the minute you work on the baby carrot, that carrot to make it look like a baby carrot, guess what happens? 
you, you, you're you removing the skin. Now it's going to go brown within 24 hours. You're going to throw it away. So what they do, they're soaked in bleach or chlorine, which can cause cancer in the body. So you want to be very, very uh, careful when you're eating carrots. You want to buy carrots. First of all, you want to buy them it complete. That's the first thing. The second thing is you want to buy them with the leaves on. Because if they've got the leaves on, it means that they uh, haven't been soaked in budnip. Now, what is budnip? Budnip is a toxic chemical that stops plants from sprouting. Anything that grows below the ground. So they put it on beets, they put it on potatoes, they put it on yams, they put it on sweet potatoes, they put it on carrots. Now, the problem with budnip, it is so toxic that uh, it's not allowed to be used on animal food because it is such a toxic product. The next thing over here is broccoli. Now, look at this again. A broccoli, uh, that's broccoli under a microscope, and yes, cancer under a microscope, and we all know broccoli is a great antioxidant. So uh, what I love about broccoli, it's a fantastic antioxidant. It's, a, it's alkaline, it's cancer prevention, it's immunity, it's for nervous system, it's got electrolytes, it's got all your kind of minerals and vitamins and fiber, just a great, great product. The problem with broccoli, they glue the chemical on, the pesticide onto it with silicon. Now silicon again is a water repellent. And so now that because broccoli has only got about a two month harvest period in the year. And so what they want to do, they want to make sure that you've got broccoli for the whole year because it's so nice to go to Whole Foods and Sprouts and Trader Joe's and buy fresh vegetables. But look at all that surface area where there's pesticides and chemicals glued on. I know a lady who was dying. She was about 32 years old when I met her. Uh, she, she passed away about a month later. She had these two little children, both under the age of four, that were holding onto her dress when I arrived there. And when I showed them, she was juicing broccoli all day long because she heard how good it was for her. But she didn't know to remove this chemical off the broccoli. So just take your broccoli, hold it underneath the faucet, and you'll be shocked. How, to, how how the water just goes off like an umbrella. I remember going to Whole Foods and I said, how come um, I can use my broccoli as an umbrella? And the lady said there, it's because we glue the pesticide on. I said, lady, but this is certified organic. She said, yeah, organic means the pesticides on the outside. Non-organic means the pesticides have been applied through the root structure into the plant. So you can't wash it off. You can't peel it off. That blew my mind away. So I said, how am I going to remove this? I'm a farmer. I know the poisons in, in pesticides and chemicals. And she gave me a vegetable wash that said organics. I read the label, but it had no ingredients. The only thing it said other and lemon was under other. And I know other means less than 1%. So I phoned the factory with the, the manager next to me. And guess what the manager said? They couldn't tell me what the ingredients were because it was a trade secret. We haven't analyzed. And guess what the ingredient was? It was made from petroleum. That's when I discovered petroleum's organic. You pump it out the ground. And that just blew my mind that you can make something out of gasoline and call it organic. Well, kale is just an incredible thing. Remember, it's, a, it's the third most toxic food in the world. But kale is absolutely wonderful. It's packed with minerals, but great for your bones, blood sugar, cancer fighting, antioxidant. Beets are absolutely incredible. They, now, the best beets to get are the yellow beets. Yellow beets are low in sugar. I've got four bunches on my counter right now. I do have one bunch of red beets to add. I make this whole big uh, mixture of everything when I make a vegetable juice. So when you finish, I've got four of these calls today. When I finish the fourth one, I'll be making vegetable juice. The next thing is beets is full of enzymes. That's why it's great. For, and you must use the leaves. They're also... They cleanse your blood, they cleanse your liver, they're great for blood pressure, wonderful for anemia, great for arthritis, wonderful for energy. But the leaves is where most of the nutrition is. So uh, if you're gonna use beets like this, just be careful, the bulb is packed with sugar. Uh, always wash all your vegetables, remove the chemicals. Now look at this over here, this really shocked me. Uh, when I came to the USA, you can go buy a packet of garden salad. And you could keep it in your fridge for a month. But if I chop up a lettuce today, by tomorrow, I'll throw it away. And I thought, what the heck is going on here until I, that's when I discovered that they're soaking these things in preservatives and chemicals and toxins and poisons, and all that kind of stuff. All right. So when you're looking for these kind of vegetables, what are you looking for? The first thing is, remember I mentioned the PLU number of nine. Nine means 
uh, that, that what I told you, you can remove the pesticide that is grown with non-GMO seed and that it's got far more nutritional value because they didn't use NPK, which is a fertilizer made from petroleum. And uh, so, uh, so you want to be very careful. Now look at the GMOs. These are the foods you have to be very careful. The first time we discovered our corn was so bad was when a study was done in in China, let's let's find the study for you. No, oh, it's far away. We'll come back to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. So let's look at the study. The study was done in France. What they did with the study of yeah, they they took rats and they gave them the corn that we eat in this country, and the female rats got breast cancer, and the male rats got cancer between the legs. Now, folks, that is terrible. That is terrible. It even gets worse than this because then they decided to check the label of food and they go to Whole Foods and they buy these tortilla chips there. And on the label, it says non-GMO. And when they, when they uh, analyzed the food, it was 100% GMO. The study was done by Consumer Reports. And when they tried to sue the company, they lost the case because the company proved that the ingredient list was for the packaging not the contents. All right, so let's get back to where we were a few seconds ago. There we are. So when you're buying foods, you want to try and make sure that they're non-GMO. So the Chinese returned about 400 million tons of corn that was ready in China. Uh, soybeans, uh, you know, if you can think that Japan is the lowest in breast cancer of any country in the world, and they're the number one in healthiest country in the world. They're the lowest in breast cancer, and they're the highest in soy consuming. And yet in the USA, if you have breast cancer, the first thing your doctor says, stop eating soy. So why is that? Because they use our soy genetically. Plus, is made from petroleum. They harvested with a ripening agent called Roundup, and they crossed quite often. The plant is uh, soybean in, in many uh, of the different varieties is crossed with rat DNA. So just be very careful of these foods when you're purchasing these foods. They must definitely have the nine on them. Tomatoes, if you, if you open a tomato, uh, slice it, it's got different little cavities inside that tomato, just like a heart has got cavities inside your heart. And tomatoes are great for cancer prevention, prostate, antioxidant. And the most exciting thing is tomatoes actually increase the nutrient value, the antioxidant properties, uh, when you cook them, when you heat them up. Uh, avocados, look at this. An avocado takes nine months to grow. It's shaped a lot like the womb of a lady. And guess what happens? It's incredible. It's got all the oils for the baby, for, uh, for the brain to develop, to, to protect you in that area and to help your child develop the brain properly. So avocados are wonderful, wonderful thing. The biggest problem is nearly all of our avocados in this country are irradiated for ripening. And uh, then olives. Uh, olive again uh, looks a little bit like a sex organ and is really great. Uh, for that part of the body. It's a protector and it is wonderful for cholesterol, anti-inflammatory, a great, great product and olive. What about celery? Now, I love celery. I'll tell you, celery is wonderful for your bones, for digestion, for cholesterol, for cardiovascular, for antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, minerals, electrolytes, detoxifier, uh, uh, alkaline, but uh, that was why it broke my heart to see celery on the dirty dozen list that they put the pesticide through the root structure. It's inside the plant. It's not on the surface. Now, if you look there, uh, celery looks a lot like a bone and it's wonderful as a bone healer, uh, just incredible. And celery looks a bit, if you hold it upside down, like your nervous system and it's just packed with electrolytes and nutrients for your body. Walnut looks a bit like a human brain, right? Walnut looks a bit like a human brain, and it's wonderful for your brains, for your bones, uh, cholesterol, anti-inflammatory. The biggest challenge we have in this country, if you can get them directly from a farmer, that's best, because walnuts in the USA, or nearly all of our nuts are irradiated, so uh, very important. Uh, citrus, if you buy citrus, remember the nutrition in the citrus is in the white. 
in the white. So when you're going to peel those lemons, peel them with a potato peeler. And look at the study over here showed that um, the, the white of the, of the citrus, which is very similar to the mammary gland in the breast, that has got five bioflavonoids that can protect you from breast cancer. So orange is a very, or a grapefruit, a lemon, very similar shape to a breast, and it's very good for that. And it's also got compartments in there, just like your breast has got compartment. God is amazing how he did all this kind of stuff. So citrus is great for immunity, respir respiration, stomach, heart, cancer, fiber, mammary gland, just a great, great product. And remember again, the more the sweeter it gets, the more sugar, cancer loves sugar, uh, you want to get it uh, more tangy. So don't go out there and search for all the sweetest stuff you can. Uh, just change your taste buds a bit. Uh, digestion, uh, you know, uh, ginger is just incredible. Here's a picture, make it look a bit like your stomach. But ginger is great for digestion. It's wonderful for detoxing. It's a cancer fighter. It's wonderful for your liver. It's great for motion sickness. It's packed with electrolytes. If you ever get home one day and you just brain fog, brain burnt out. You take some ginger and I'm drinking some right now. And you, you, um, you take that ginger and you grate it and you put it into some warm water with a bit of lemon in there. Oh, it is so good. And then when you get to the bottom, chew that ginger. It is just so, so great for you. I remember if you're buying ginger, try and get organic ginger study. I've seen many reports saying that the Chinese are growing it in human poop paddocks across in China. If you don't, can't find organic. And how can you tell the difference? The thickness, the very thick ones. You can see them look totally different to the actual organic ones. And so if you can't get them, just make sure you peel it properly that you're getting off all that preservative, the bleach and the chlorine and the human poop. All right, we did show you those. Look at the study Yanya, on baby foods. They found arsenic. This is why you want to do everything from scratch. They found arsenic, cadmium, lead, economid, found at high levels, nearly 80% of infant formula and baby food. So even the organic had some in there. So there's a whole study across there, absolutely heartbreaking. What to deal with breakfast cereal? I never forget when I saw that if a rat ate the cardboard box, it would live, if the rat ate the outer cardboard box, it would live longer than if it actually ate the cereal. How ridiculous is that, you know? And that's because the way they extracted and preserved all that kind of stuff, it's just absolutely heartbreaking. So don't buy breakfast cereal. You know, if you have to now and again, this is part of your 10%, your I say eat about 90% good, or at least 80% good, 20% bad, but the closer to 100%, the better. But try and get yourself a stone ground, organic oats or something like it. If you're going to have something like that, we hardly ever eat this kind of stuff. The next thing is, what about flip-flops? I never saw, I never forget this when I saw that uh, the food babe, she did an investigation. She found that the first company out there was Subway, uh, that they, they were putting flip-flop material into their breads. Now, come on, folks, how bad is that? And this to me is actually heartbreaking because uh, you know, the flip flop material is so damaging to your, to your digestive system. And now you, uh, 70 to 80% of your health starts in your gut. And if you're messing up your gut, you're destroying your life. So you want to make sure you're eating yourself good breads. And I'm sure these are all good breads all in put up here because I know Ezekiel is a good bread. Yeah, uh, so, so Dave's bread and things like that. But the best thing to do is really make your own. Just buy your own spelt flour, iron corn flour, whatever flour, just make sure it's an ancient grain, millet yourself in your little blender and make your own bread. It's so easy. I'm even making my own bread now. I never thought that's possible. Well, what, I just remember something, look at all this, isn't this absolutely disgusting? All these dead fish floating in this poop and things like a consumer reports tests of farm shrimp found salmonella, uh, E. coli, list, listeria on 60% of samples of shrimp and I've seen the same studies on fish and things like that. Uh, olive oil, UC Davis found 69% of import of olive oil to be fake or did not meet standards. So when you're buying an olive oil, just make sure it's only olive oil. I was at Whole Foods and I was checking this out two days ago. And at least half the, the oils there are blended. They blend with grapeseed or they blend with ever. The minute you blend something, you can't trust the label. It must be an isolate and it needs to have a seal of accountability. 
Uh, if it's got a seal of accountability, you know that you can trust the product if it's only got one ingredient in there. But if it says, let's say olive oil and grapeseed oil uh, mix, and it's got a seal on, which of those are the organic one? And so that's why you have to be very, very careful with these things. The next thing is Heinz no longer. Unbelievable. When I saw this, I thought Heinz was a good ketchup. Heinz no longer qualifies as ketchup in Israel. So yeah, you are. Israel's told Heinz, change its name. Otherwise, they can't send it back there because it doesn't have enough tomatoes into court Heinz to call it ketchup. How bad is that, right? It was all full of dyes and colorants and flavorants and thickness and soy and all this kind of stuff. Look at this study done on honey. As a matter of fact, the first study in the world on honey, proving that nearly all the honey sold in the country uh, was not honey, was done in South Africa. And they also did the first one on olive oil. But look at this over here. Food safety news found 75% of store sold honey contains no pollen. It was high fructose corn syrup. I was at Sprouts and I asked them there, I said, hey, I'm looking for some quality honey. And, uh, and the gentleman said, why? I said, well, I had cancer. I'm scared of taking something that could aggravate it. He said, Louis, uh, there's only two brands. And there must have been about 30 brands, maybe 40 brands out there. There's only two brands, he said, that he would buy uh, in the whole Sprout range. And he was in charge of that department. That just blew my mind that they actually knew about it. Well, Bloomberg News reports no evidence of aloe vera found in aloe vera at Walmart and Target. Now, come on. How ridiculous is that? It was crushed pine needles, which is so toxic. You can see nothing grows underneath those trees. If you go and buy things like herbs, uh, have you ever thought of buying things like ginkgo biloba, St. John's wort, saw palmetto, valerian root, anisha, echinacea, garlic, ginseng, any of those things? New York State Attorney General reports GNC, Walmart, Target, Walgreens herbals do not contain the herb shown on the label. So guess what I do? I buy the herb, I, I wash it myself, remove the pesticide, I then put it in packets, I freeze it, and I label it in the door, uh, basil or thyme or parsley, and I've got everything over there. What I, what I love about these studies I'm showing you, if you look at the bottom of the page, there's the study right there. You can go and research it yourself. Uh, common cooking oils are overprocessed. Most contain GMO, so you have to be very careful of this kind of stuff. Uh, good oils are your coconut, um, olive oil, sesame oil, avocado oil, almond, almond oil, if they isolate and if they've got an organic seal on. Uh, MSG, just be careful. MSG, I had a lady phone me in South Africa. She said, uh, I was visiting South Africa. She was from Los Angeles, and she, asked, she, she told me all the symptoms, which are things could be in headaches. Uh, flushing, sweating, chest pains, heart palpitations, nausea, weakness. I said, sounds like you had MSG poisoning. She said, no, I don't use MSG. So I, I said, go to the internet and print out the names. Look at all these new names for MSG. When, when I came to, uh, to the, back to the USA, she picked me up at the airport and she said, I want to show you something. She had a whole trunk load of things that had MSG in that she didn't know was MSG in her house. Nitrates and nitrites. Uh, you know, uh, not good or bad. I would just say they're bad. Just be very, very careful of them. Uh, you know, uh, the good ones in natural form, in other words, if you're eating your vegetables, got them in, but they're, if they're extracting them and isolating them out your vegetables and putting them on your food, they're not so good. Now, come on, I'm not perfect. I had some bacon yesterday. Don't throw anything at me. And it, it had organic nitrates on it uh, as a preservative, nitrates as a preservative. Um, I bought it from a butcher that I know personally, a German butcher. But hey, guess what? That's part of my 20%. I'm not going to eat it every single day. But you want to be very careful of this kind of stuff because they put it in sandwich meat, they put it on bacon, they put it on hot dogs. All this kind of stuff can be very bad for you. What to choose in fresh food? You want to choose good wheats as your iron corn, emma, spelt, rice, your brown rice, black rice, red rice, and wild rice. As a matter of fact, a study done in India on diabetics, they gave them wild rice. This was at a hospital, a very poor area, and they tried the brown rice, the black rice, the red rice. They didn't get uh, the results they wanted because they had no insulin. These diabetics were really bad. They were dying. And just by wild rice, they could get them off of totally uh, beat their diabetes. And they would got the orphanage next door. 
to come and farm their, fa their farm for them, supply the hospital wild rice, and then the orphanage could take as much rice as they needed for the orphanage. So it was a win-win situation, but they beat diabetes just with wild rice. Absolutely incredible. Uh, fish, which are the healthiest fish, you know, your, your wild Alaskan and which, if you're gonna eat wild Alaskan, the best one to eat is your uh, coho salmon or silver salmon, they caught it in some areas. Uh, you know, you can eat any of your wild caught food, oysters are very good, uh, you know, but the problem with, look, they're very good for you, they're full of nutrition, but the, our ocean is so full of toxins. So we have to be very careful, remember that the oysters are, they clean the oceans just like mussels do and things like that. Uh, freshwater white fish, if you can get it from good running streams above all the pollution. So these are the foods to, uh, the seafoods to avoid. I don't want to go through them all, but basically anything that goes real big, if it grows real big and eats other fish, is getting the chemicals and pollutants from the smaller fish. Beef, organic, uh, you want to 100% grass fed. I just picked up a whole cow. Um, it's still in my car because that, that's where I kept it frozen till I can pack it in my freezer. Uh, chicken, it's so cold outside. Chicken, um, healthiest chicken. You know, if you can get Mary's chicken, it's a great chicken, but you want to make sure that it is pasture raised out in the country that hasn't been fed GMOs and all this kind of stuff. Uh, remember, one of the biggest problems with chicken, what do they do with chickens? They feed the chickens um, um, arsenic. And the reason being because they put it in the water. So when the chickens drink the arsenic, it does a whole bunch of things. Number one is, in the chicken poop is fly killer, arsenic is fly killer. So when the flies eat the chicken poop, they die. Secondly, the meat is very tender because arsenic is slowly killing a chicken or kill them over about eight weeks, but they'll harvest the chicken in six to seven weeks. So they harvest them just before they die. And it bleaches this, the meat, which would normally be a dark brown color. It bleaches it really white and people like to have pretty white meat on their plates. They don't mind if it kills them. So you want to make sure you're getting, you're getting uh, pasture raised. Avoid humanly raised, cage-free, hormone-free, all that kind of stuff. Lamb is one of the best uh, foods out there. Turkey is also another good food out there. So these are just great eggs. Make sure that it is uh, pasture raised, that it's not free range, anything like it must be pasture raised. Certified organic color makes no difference. Vegetables, organic, best fresh rather than frozen, wash with green or LD, uh, LDC, not LSD. <laughs> That's good. Leafy greens washed just prior to use. Other outer leaves of cabbage and similar don't wash. Fruit organic, peel, peel fuzzy fruit like peaches. Remove zest from lemon with veg peeler. Keep the white pith. Herbs organic, buy our own. And I've been through all these already for you. Buying a um, cucumber, remember the long, thin English cucumbers are not tangy. They don't have the detoxifier with the short, fat ones, knobbly ones do. Try and get these. Wash them thoroughly because they're soaking them in gasoline so that they uh, last longer. When water, he has a great economic water filter to buy Berkeley. You don't have to plug it in. It's really a great uh, a filter. Absolutely a wonderful system. If you're going to be traveling Fiji, is a good water to buy. Nothing in a box, nothing in a packet, nothing in a can, nothing frozen. These are some great documentaries to watch. My Potato Project, uh, Seeds of Death. I think these links are all on our website and uh, I would think on our Facebook site. A beautiful Truth, David versus Monsanto, Feel Good, Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead, Fed Up, Food Inc, Food Matters, The Future of Food, the human experiment, hungry for change, stink, what the health, and what's with wheat. Those are all great documentaries. Remember, look, just remember, can you get the nutrient out of your food? Well, two independent studies showed in the 1950s that the nutrient value in things like vitamin C dropped by 60%. And come on, folks, uh, that is absolutely sad because that study finished in the 1999. So that we are now 20 years down the road how much worse is our food today? And they discovered because of three things. Number one, because we grow three crops a year, where the Bible tells us grow one crop a year for six years and the seventh year, let the soil recover. And the second thing is uh, you want to make sure, uh, sorry, that they discovered over there uh, that it's, uh, 
they use synthetic fertilizer. And the last thing across there is that it was stored for long periods. What about supplements? If I eat right, can I get the right nutrients out of my supplements? Well, in this study over here of nearly 22,000 people, not even one got 10 specific nutrients. So in this study, it was impossible, impossible to get the nutrients out of the food we're eating because of what's happened in our food today. Well, welcome to this incredible health journey to empower your life. The person who invited you uh, to this presentation will contact you within the next 24 hours. Thank you so much. We're going to get a few people to give their test meals right now. Um, if you're on the call across over here, let's see who's on the call. Melanie, by changing your lifestyle, uh, what happened to your life? Then after Melanie, we've got a Sean uh, from Texas, Melanie from California, Sean from Texas. Then we are going to shoot across to uh, Cameron, if you're there from uh, Idaho, and we'll go to Caleb from um, New York. Let's go through. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Melanie. Um, basically, my story is simply that I loved everything I was doing, doing too much, and my health started to really drop down my last year of teaching full-time in the school, and I had children's choirs and kids at home still and all those good kinds of things. And um, my health just started to drop, couldn't seem to pull it around. And I had loved teaching fifth grade science and Louie came uh, to the university that I was then teaching at later after working with kids for a lot of years and um, started to talk about the science of neolife. And he started to tell me about chelated minerals and he started to tell me about all kinds of um, uh, things about tree and end. And it all made sense. And basically what I did was change my, uh, I had already really changed most of my diet, but I changed my supplementation from what I was doing, which was actually known to be a very good one, recommended by chiropractors, et cetera, but I wasn't getting better. Um, and my health was pretty bad. I couldn't get out of a chair, couldn't get into a chair. Um, walking was an, almost felt like a dangerous thing because I could fall so easily. So I was in pretty bad spot. The doctor said I had fibromyalgia um, and I had um, chronic fatigue and early stages of adrenal burnout. I literally from Louis' talk went and just changed from the supplements I was taking to the new ones that I, um, that he told me about. And I gave it all a try. And in literally four months, um, went from probably about 40% health up to what felt like 100% health. And um, that has just stayed strong all these years. And I ended up teaching my grandkids last year at home, which were seven-year-old boys, twins, and doing a lot of other things back to doing everything. And I have a full business at home and help people with new life and do lots of wonderful things, all because I just chose to make that change. So thanks for coming that day to Biola, Louie. Excellent. Thank you. And you know, it's so exciting to, for you to hear from Melanie. She is one of the most learned people in this topic that you could imagine. Uh, you know, she has, she's got so much more qualifications than me in nutrition. And she's just an awesome, awesome lady. And she loves, I've chosen people out here, which I believe are living the, the, the lifestyle of eating correctly. So that's great. Uh, Sean, I know you changed your wife's life. Uh, I didn't see Alyssa. I see she's on the call right now, but I'm going to let you tell the story, Sean, uh, is how you changed Alyssa's life and your life by, and your information, all that kind of stuff. Take it away. Sure thing, Louis. Uh, well, I can maybe let Alyssa speak more specific to her uh, situation, but um, you know, maybe eight years ago, I was eating a bunch of boxed foods, mainly everything from the middle of the grocery store in a box, in a can. Uh, whatever would keep on my shelf for uh, months and months and months. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, I was eating a bunch of meats and really poor, poor meats. Um, I was actually frightened when I found out that the uh, uh, hot dogs, that kids who consume hot dogs are 10 times more likely to develop leukemia than kids who don't eat hot dogs. Um, uh, and I was eating a lot of hot dogs. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, well, but I was bloated. I was bloated, I was tired, I was sick, uh, I was overweight. I basically didn't have any energy for anything. Um, I wasn't good mentally, my cognition was poor and I just felt like I didn't have a lust for life. And I actually ran into some people that taught me about living plant-based and eating organic. And so I dropped everything overnight, threw everything in my fridge. I would only buy organic, I would only buy raw. 
Uh, I didn't eat anything in a box, nothing in a can, and it flipped my life around. My digestion got better, my bloating went away, my head cleared up, I was sleeping better, I lost 35 pounds. Uh, I started having more strength, more energy to work out, and overall felt better. Uh, and then I, but I just couldn't get past a plateau. I couldn't get back to where I really felt at my optimal health. Um, and that's, that's when I met you. And uh, I was already on the whole organic, raw, non-GMO foods. And when I found out that I could supplement with 100% uh, organic uh, supplements from food, I was even more excited about that because you just can't eat enough throughout the day. Um, and then I met my wife, uh, who wasn't my wife at the time, obviously, but I met her and she had some really severe digestion issues. And so we started working with her about cutting some things out and isolating her diet and buying more organic and, and eating fresh food and supplementing. And I can let you tell a little bit more about that, babe, because you have done really well. Thank you, Sean. And you're just listening to a man over there who really does it right. Him, Melissa, I met them at a, when they were getting married down in Mexico. And I was quite surprised because they were basically telling the chef how to cook their food via the waiter and what to prepare and what to eat. So I was really impressed with them. Uh, just absolutely great fanatical people about looking after their bodies, which is God's temple. Take it away, Melissa. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, when I met my husband, I had been dealing with a lot of health issues, including depression, anxiety, IBS. Um, I had candida overgrowth in my gut. Um, all of those things had started about six months earlier before I met Sean and I had severe um, and significant weight loss. I was unable to work. I was working only a part-time job at the time because I was sleeping the rest of the day. I had narcoleptic episodes. So I was going through a lot of health issues. Um, and when I met Sean, he was like, okay, I, I can help you with this. Let's start with, you know, healing your gut. And so he made me these terrible cabbage smoothies every day. They were so bad, but they were so good for me. And I drank them every day religiously. And he would make me food every time we had a date night, he would make me like five meals for the rest of the week. Um, and so he just got me learning more about food, about nutrition, about what I'm putting into my body. And within a couple of months, I started to feel a lot different. Um, I noticed a change for me and it took about two years of consistency with that for me to get back to the point where I felt good again, where I had energy. Um, and now in the last two years since then, um, including supplementation into my lifestyle, as well as honing in a little bit more on things that are triggers for me. Um, I have actually gone back to feeling better than I ever have in my whole life. I have more energy. I'm healthier. I, my immune system is better because I was always a sick kid. So, um, this is actually the best I've ever felt in my whole life. Fantastic. That's so exciting. Okay. We are really running out of time, but I want Caleb, I want Cameron, and I want Araceli if she's there. Let's go real quick. Uh, okay. All right. You said my name first, so I'll go first. Go for so it. my wife is, um, my wife has been on a, a getting us to eat healthy journey for probably 15 years. My whole marriage, actually, I grew up not, not too focused on the nutrition aspect. And my wife has been pulling us towards that. Um, but uh, with her knowledge, it's kind of built into a bit of a passion for us. So we have, we have a little farm that we're going. We try to grow most of our own food um, during the summer with um, gardens and raise our, our own meat um, between pork and, and beef with a neighbor um, to really control our food source because we really understand how important it is. So for me, just personally, um, growing up, I always had hay fever so bad through the summer watery eyes, runny nose. I would always blow my nose continually until it was red and raw. And um, one of my friends here, Brian uh, Jolly, said, hey, sounds like vitamin A might be a help for you. So I grabbed some vitamin A from Neolife and started to supplement that. And it took care of all of my hay fever problems. So I can work out in the fields and do what I need to do outside. Uh, and not have a raw and runny nose. So just small tweaks like that are so helpful when you're when you're walking through nutrition. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Caleb. Cameron, all the way from, I don't know where. <laughs> <laughs> you're just here. Uh, it's cool, Ken. Yeah. Um, 
So I met Louis 11 years ago. And at the time I had been juicing for a few years, um, been interested in nutrition, but my health had taken a total dive because I was living up where Louis lives now at, um, at Hume Lake Christian camps. And we were eating basically great F Cisco food. You know, I was eating the bananas and the apples every day in the salad bar, having coffee, and I just had no energy. And so um, I was really frustrated and I, I knew that nutrition was something I needed more, but I didn't have any idea how it worked. And so Louis taught us, you know, we need 22 amino acids. As a matter of fact, he gave me a protein with 22 amino acids. He would make us a smoothie and I would wake up the next morning with energy that I had never had even in high school because I had um, onset chronic fatigue that I found out just before that year. I had chronic uh, sinus um, and cold infections and that lasted through the summer. So it wasn't just a winter thing for me that developed that year. And so um, Louis taught me about juicing fresh fruits and vegetables and how to take the pesticides out, how to get fresh organic stuff. You know, organic was really a buzzword at that time. It was a new thing. Now everyone talks about organic. And he also taught me what are the core cellular nutrients that I need. I started getting whole green oils in my diet um, and just the really important things that completely turned my chronic fatigue around. I went from being sick all the time and having, I went from being sick and having no energy to having abundant energy. And so I'm so grateful that I met Louis. And that helped me. Uh, my wife as well totally turned her health around when she started uh, not just eating kale, thinking that was healthy, but eating organic kale, washing the pesticides off of it, getting nutrients. And um, now we have three beautiful kids. We don't give them baby food from the store. We make sure that we wash and prepare their fresh fruits and vegetables ourselves. And um, we make sure we give them complete protein and make sure they're nursing and all that stuff. And it's so nice to have healthy kids that are smart that, um, that exceed expectations that aren't sick all the time and that aren't getting poison in their bodies. Fantastic, Cameron, thank you so much. Yeah, Cameron, it's, so, it's just so good to see you folks who've taken ownership of your lives. I just make, it makes you so proud. You know, we, we're making the world a better place. Uh, then we're gonna go to Araceli, Southern California, Araceli out there. Uh, her, she is just incredible what she did to save her husband's life who had cancer and they changed their diet and totally organic. Tell us Araceli, what happened? Well, yeah, that's that's really true, Louis. Uh, and and um, that part wasn't really hard for me because I grew up in Mexico and my mom always uh, cooked from scratch. I grew up eating whole food, you know, we have all kind of trees we have uh all the best of vegetables growing there so we don't have to buy in stores you know and it was really good so when i came to to california and uh the first four uh the first four months trying eating the way that i was eating here i started suffering from pain and inflammation and it was hell so after that it came to my husband uh, you know was diagnosed with cancer and we totally changed our eating habits into uh, non-GMO, all organic. Thanks God that put uh, brother Carlos uh, Tristan in our way. And you know, he talked to us about new life. So that saved my life and that saved my husband's life. So it is really important. And thank you, Louis, because since we signed up into uh, new life, uh, my husband and I just laugh about it because we follow you everywhere that you have meetings we follow you we didn't invite anybody but we follow you and we took a lot of notes and that was the way that we learned you know from you and uh that helped us to change our life and now it's it's the way that we you know we teach people around us to change their their lifestyle first you know of course with new life because we have all the nutrients there that we don't have in the food even organic even no gmo the, the soil is depleted and we don't have all the nutrients, so we have Neo Life. Neo Life, you know, make the difference. And I just tell people, Neo Life is not another supplement company. Neo Life is cellular nutrition. So that makes us the best of the world. So thank you again, Louis. Fantastic. I would love to hear a lot more uh, testimonies, but we are out of time. We've got a, a, uh, a call into Russia in five minutes' time. Uh, but in closing over here, is I wanted to just finish my story. So yeah, I was sent home with, with, with cancer to die at the age of 31 after trying everything medically under the sun uh, for five years. And uh, my oncologist, who was a family friend, not trying to kill me, tried everything he knew possible. He eventually said, Louis, we can't help you. And that when I went home, that's when I discovered God's impeccable grace and timing. Because I, when I gave up everything man-made to help my body, 
I meet somebody who said, change your lifestyle. And I changed my lifestyle. I stopped using poisonous toothpaste and poisonous shampoo and poisonous conditioner, poisonous lawn detergent, poisonous skin creams and eating only organic, cooked from scratch, nothing in a box, nothing in a packet, nothing in a can, nothing frozen, if at all possible. And at the age of 60, I decided, let me try and get a life policy because I could never get a life policy. And the age of 60, I was given a life policy of a 25 year old. As a matter of fact, the company was so impressed with my health, they flew me to Washington twice to speak to their corporate head office. As they said, they'd never seen a person, a cancer, a cancer survivor that was sent home to die by the medical system, kidney and liver failure from all the medications that he was taking, and then get a life policy of a 25 year old. They said, you've got something to teach us. And that's why I am so excited about you folks joining us on this journey together, because we're on a mission to make the world a better place. We're gonna create an army to march across this world, empowering people to make simple everyday choices to increase their energy, help them sleep better, help them feel better, help them live longer and boost their immune systems. It was great chatting to you. Please get hold of the person who sent you this little video and say, hey, I'd love to find out more about the next part of this program. Have a great day and God bless. Bye.